Welcome back to another War Paints Fanatic tutorial brought to you from the basement of our Danish headquarters, where our lead studio painter and product developer Thomas Koltau goes to town on a beautiful model from our friends at Games Workshop, Lionel Johnson, Primark of the Dark Angels. We will be showcasing a few different advanced techniques in this masterclass tutorial to really showcase the range of the new Fanatic paints, so you don't want to miss it. Let's get right to it. We're going to begin by priming the model using War Paints Air Primer Matte Black. We love our color primer sprays, but the air primers are a great alternative when the weather outside isn't working in your favor. Next, we'll apply a smooth Zenithal highlight using War Paints Air Matte White. The Zenithal highlight will help visualize the highlights, shadows, and details on the model, and it'll help us out in later stages of this tutorial. Now it's time to block in some color. First, we'll use War Paints Fanatic Scarab Green along with some retarder and stabilizer to help smooth this paint out even further. Thomas just applies a little bit of both to his palette and grabs them with his Wargamer Rotmarter Sable Regiment Brush as needed. If you haven't invested in a wet palette yet, now is a great time. The Army Painter has two options. Our smaller original wet palette is great for small places and working on the go, while the larger Wargamer wet palette works well for larger desks and comes with a handy dipping well insert for washes and speed paint. Right back to it, Thomas will take his time applying Scarab Green to all of the armor on the model. He's simply aiming to get smooth, even base coat, which is easy to do with this Fanatic formula. Once he's happy, he'll apply a dark tone wash all over the scarab green armor. This, once dry, will help to define the details so we can push the contrast even further in later stages. Do your best to prevent the wash from pooling too much, as the wash will stay workable longer on the model. We're going to apply some shadow to the armor by mixing in a touch of matte black with our scarab green. You can see Thomas applying this to the inner side of the leg armor. Then he'll alternate using Scarab Green on the other side to begin locating his light source on the model. The retarder aids in prolonging the drying time so that Thomas can go back and forth, blending the darker mixture with those base tones for a smooth gradient on the surface of the miniature. He'll repeat these steps on all of the details on the model. Moving on to our first layered highlight, here is Temple Gate Teal. This will be focused on the upper areas and the areas where the light source would reflect the most from the model. He'll also use this to begin the first stages of edge and detail highlights as neat as he can with his Wargamer character brush. Then with Talisman Teal, let's apply a refined and more focused edge highlight. I know edge highlighting can be daunting for newer painters, and with practice and thin down paints for more control, it's a much easier task thanks to the increased pigmentation and coverage of the War Paints Fanatic formula. With Amulet Aqua, Thomas will apply an even more focused highlight to the sharpest edges and most pronounced details to really make the dark green armor pop. With the first stages of the armor done, we'll move on to painting the inner cloak. Thomas will employ the wet blending technique. Once again, some more paints retarder will help a great deal in blending up our colors here. Speaking of, Thomas selected Wasteland Clay, Tundra Top, and Burnt Turf from the Okra Tans Flexible Color Triad. After applying a smooth base coat of Tundra Top, Thomas will begin defining the shadow areas with Wasteland Clay and later push the highlights with Burnt Turf. While this coat is still wet on the surface, we'll grab some Tundra Top from our palette and blend the two paints together. That is wet blending in a nutshell. You'll want to focus on quadrants and sections of the miniature as opposed to the whole cloak at once so that you can continue to work while the paint is still wet. Taking this cloak even further, we'll continue wet blending the brightest areas with Baron Dune from the same triad and bony spikes from the light neutral triad. If you're ever struggling to figure out where to place your highlights, a good tip is to take a photo after you're done Zenithal priming your miniature and use that for reference later on. Or just stop and look how the light in your hobby room is bouncing off and reflecting from the miniature and simply replicate that with your paint and color choices. We're often trained that every brushstroke needs to be smooth and perfect, 
but often adding texture with your brush strokes gives the model an even more realistic appearance. There is a kind of beauty in imperfection after all. I promise you that'll be it for uh, this tutorial's inspirational quotes. Now with bony spikes, Thomas is going to really exaggerate the highlights on this creamy colored cape, following along the same steps and techniques as before, but more confined and refined in its application. We approached the backside of the cloak in much the same fashion with the deep and vibrant green triads. As we jump to the lion's helm, you can see some of the metallics have already been done, but we promise we'll walk you through that a bit later as we'll start with a smooth base coat of mold berry, which is quickly becoming a universal base coat for most reds we're doing at HQ. We'll also use this color on the emperor's shield that the lion is wielding. Next, we'll apply a wash using Fanatic Dark Red Tone all over the red areas. Once that's dry, we'll reestablish our base tones and preview some of the initial highlights with Mold Berry. Then mix in a bit of resplendent red to create a nice transition from the desaturated violet base tone to a warmer, more saturated red. We'll refine those blends and further push them to a warmer red with angelic red. We'll use this to begin picking out some of the edges and details with this color as well. And then we'll add a final highlight with sacred scarlet. I promise you metallics and Thomas once again delivers. For all of the areas we want to be represented with gold, we'll apply a smooth base coat of greedy gold. These reformulated metallics feature a hybrid aluminum and mica alloy. This acrylic flake offers better coverage and a smoother application while still presenting a reflective sheen. Be as neat as you can with these gold details so you don't ruin any of your previous hard work on the armor and other bits. This is a new one for you to try at home with your Fanatic Paints Mix Red Tone and Orange Tone Wash for your golds. Apply this all over the gold on the model and allow those pigments to work their way into the recesses. This will help to deepen the gold and give it a richer tone. Once dry, apply a wash of dark skin shade to really indulge the shadows on the details. Next, begin applying highlights with True Brass. This is quickly becoming my personal favorite from the metallics range, and it's the perfect highlight tone for gold and other ruddy metals. Tundra Top finds its way back into this project for the decorative pelt the Primark wears. I'm guessing it's a lion's pelt, but we will let the lore fanatics in the comments confirm or deny that. Next up is Demigod Flames. Thomas is applying this in a layered, almost overbrushed fashion. This will help to establish volume and interest in the pelt's fur. Give the pelt an all over wash with the new Fanatic Sepia Tone. Once that's dry, we'll apply a highlight of Demigod Flames. Follow it up with some fiendish yellow and don't be afraid to add some texture and variety because it is fur after all.
Go grab you some space dust and finish off the pelt with a refined highlight to the most raged edges and details. Next up to bat we have oak brown and we'll use this to apply a base color for the claws. Follow that up with a quick highlight of tundra top and then we'll move on to the sword. Here Thomas will apply dark blue tone right over the zenithal base layer to darken it down a touch and reinforce the details. Once dry, he'll snag a bit of deep ocean blue and glaze this into the shadows for a nice deep bluish flat finish. With that shading established, he will grab some cobalt metal, a nice bluish metal, and begin picking out his highlight placement. For the blade, we'll feather in the metal over the flat finished areas on one side, and this will create an optical illusion that the blade is more reflective on that side than the other, as the light is more focused on it. You can use this color for an edge highlight on the blade as well. Then we'll grab some plate mail metal, a nice neutral metal, and we'll apply it a refined highlight following the same techniques as before. We'll finish the blade off with the final highlight of Mithril, a very bright silver from the Fanatic Metallics range. Look at that blade shine. I think that we're going to see a lot of this upcoming basing recipe replicated in the future because it is so easy, almost too easy, and it looks so good. Begin by applying a strong base coat of Warpaint's Fanatic Effects Dark Rust. This effect paint has a deep ruddy brown color to it, and in addition, uh, small resin particles for texture. This paint dries to a very matte, almost dusty finish. Then grab some fresh rust, another textured effect paint, and thin it down with some clean water. Thomas says approximately a 1 to 3 ratio of paint to water. Then we'll apply it like this, like a wash all over the surface of the base. You can also apply this around the boots of your Primark and use it to add rusty weathered streaks to the focus areas on the armor. I know it looks a little bit weird when wet, but just wait. I promise you it's going to look cool. We'll apply a final dry brush of the same fresh rust that we had on our palette. And there it is. One of the most simple yet effective basing recipes I've ever seen. Add the tufts of your choice or maybe some Battlefield's razor wire and you can call it done. Epic models like Lionel Johnson, Primark of the First Legion, deserve epic paint jobs. Learning more advanced techniques for your characters, heroes, and monsters is a great way to elevate the rest of your army. Hopefully this tutorial helped to showcase the range of the exciting new Fanatic paints, but also helped to prove that masterclass level miniatures are within anybody's reach when you have the right paints and the right techniques. On behalf of Thomas and the rest of the Army Painter team, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. If you haven't pre-ordered your War Paints Fanatic paint set yet, there's still time, and very soon you'll be able to access the full range at your friendly local game store, preferred online retailer, or at www.thearmypainter.com.